15 things banned in football. <laughs> Let us watch. Boots that almost wiped out an entire species and a ban from scoring headers with so many crazy laws. Which are those boots, huh? I figured I'd make a list of 15 things that are banned in football. And first up is something that Neymar did that almost got him in trouble. We all know Neymar's a huge gamer. The guy's so popular, he's even got a gaming channel on Twitch. So, to promote an upcoming Fortnite event, Neymar ditched his usual Puma Z boots for these incredible custom Fortnite boots. There's only one catch. Turns out they're illegal. According to the new UEFA rules, there is a ban in place on all provocative messages with political and religious themes, as well as promotional messages on different brands. As cool as Neymar's new custom Fortnite boots were, were, he wasn't allowed to wear them anymore. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. But at least Neymar's boots weren't trying to endanger the life of an entire species. In 2007, when Beckham made the switch from Real Madrid to LA Galaxy, the British animal welfare group Viva showed Beckham a film of kangaroos being slaughtered. Allegedly, these were the same kangaroos used to create his boots, and it immediately got to him. Once the Supreme Court of California learned about the truth behind this new line of Adidas boots, they banned Adidas from selling any boots made from kangaroo leather. Beckham quickly decided to switch to the synthetic version. But then we have Mr. Paul Mullen, who decided to have some customised kicks to show off his political views. Okay, so Football Club Wrexham, owned by uh, Ryan Reynolds and some other guy, uh, banned <laughs> striker Paul Mullen from wearing boots emblazoned with a political message. I think we've got the image mm. there. So he posted boots. Uh, you can't quite see it because we've edited that out. Uh, he said, F the Tories on the boots, and the club said they, they couldn't do it. So what do you think about this? In a statement released after Mullins' boots went viral, they said while the player and everyone at the club was entitled to their own opinions, they take a neutral stance on the whole thing. And since Mullin was playing for them, it was an unwelcome distraction. I mean, it's a fairly typical press statement to be fair, but I think they've got a point on this one. Just like Sir Alex did when he moved for a special version of boots to be banned after they cost him his star player. Roy Keane was an absolute beast on the pitch, but he got injured from a tackle and was out for two months. When the scan results came in, Sir Alex Ferguson said he found marks of bladed boots on Roy's shin, and it made him go nuts. All forms of bladed boots immediately got banned at Manchester United. It isn't just boots getting kicked out of the game. There are shirt bans as well. Coming into the 2002 World Cup, the participating countries began releasing their jerseys, and it was all going great. That was until Cameroon decided to unveil their version of the World Cup kit. And <laughs> Hey, Africa. We are just built different, man. FIFA lost it. What the hell is even that? FIFA was less than impressed with Cameroon's decision to launch these controversial kits and demanded they be replaced before the start of the World Cup. The spokesman for FIFA, Keith Cooper, branded them as vests and not shirts. I've not seen a shirt flop this bad since Barca's 2020 shirt. What's rule number one about making kits? You never copy your arch rivals. But if you look at this away kit for the 2020-21 season, it literally looks like Real Madrid's home kit. The top officials at Barcelona immediately spotted this error and quickly had it taken down before the fans could see it. Now when it comes to shirts in football, the governing bodies have rules that guide them, including keeping your shirt on at all times. But if you happen to play a game, score a late winner and decide to pull off a Cristiano Ronaldo, well, you're going to get it from the referee. The International Football Association body, IFAB, states that taking off your shirt after scoring is unnecessary and players should avoid excessive displays of joy. It's generally considered bad behavior. Behavior. So unless you're willing to get a yellow to show off that six pack, I'd suggest you keep it on. There have been a lot more controversial bans by FIFA and IFAB in the past, but a few months back, it hit its absolute peak. 
With the 2022 World Cup fast approaching, we were all extremely hyped. Qatar was expecting a lot of supporters to fly in from around the world and come to watch their national teams play. However, I'm guessing they forgot to check what these fans were like until the last minute because their controversial laws almost ruined the competition. Because Qatar has a strict alcohol policy and some national fans, especially the English guys, love their beers. But all of this wasn't going to stand in Qatar because it's literally banned. Fans were still trying to get over this when another controversial ban was released just a few weeks later. The One Love armband symbol was supposed to be used by countries like England, Germany, and the Netherlands to support LGBTQ plus and same-sex campaigns. But in Qatar, it's illegal to be anything but straight, so they banned it. Now I can try to understand why this got banned for political reasons, but when the SPL came out with a crazy new ban a couple of years ago, it had a lot of people scratching their heads. After Glasgow University research showed that former footballers were three and a half times more likely to die from brain disease, the Scottish Football Association decided to ban professional footballers from heading balls the day before and after matches. And it didn't stop there. Before they even had this one in place, there was already a ban limiting headers in training for under 12 teams across the country. Even though this feels absolutely absurd, it's nothing compared to the next one. But before we get to it, guys, if you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. Can you hear him? Subscribe. It would mean the world. Now, when it comes to goalkeepers and their gloves, the sponsor logo on a goalkeeper's glove can't be bigger than 20 square centimeters, meaning any form of designs or branding on the gloves above these dimensions would be violating the rules. But to get around this one, top goalkeepers like the legend Gianluigi Buffon have worn tape covering on the gloves in European games in the past. Now, this tape isn't just used to hide sponsor logos from UEFA. It's also used to hide something very different. It's very common to see professional footballers wearing high fashion outfits on match days. However, all of that expensive drip stays in the changing rooms and off the field for a reason. See, as part of their player protection guidelines, the governing bodies have banned all forms of jewellery from the game so that no one gets hurt from any accidental collisions. And for players wearing wedding rings, the rules allow them to tape their fingers to continue the wedding vows. But speaking of having tape on your hands, I wonder how it would hold up against the latest ban from the EFL to disallow long throw-ins. Here's the deal. For teams like Stoke City and Wrexham, who specialize in deadly balls from long throw-ins, they often have to use towels provided by fans or placed at the pitch side to dry the balls and give them better grip. But during a meeting a few weeks ago, the EFL decided that the use of these towels or other equipment to clean balls before throw-ins is no longer allowed. You'd probably have guessed it by now, FIFA hates anything that goes against its rules, including the cool ones too. I mean, they had this ban. Nah, not the funny dance, that's still allowed. But the snoods, they're gone. So back in the early 2010s, snoods were becoming an increasingly popular fashion trend in the game. And after popular professionals like Samir Nasri, Carlos Tevez, and Mario Balotelli started wearing them, suddenly everybody wanted them. But the FIFA president at the time, the very honest Sepp Blatter, he didn't fancy them. And in a meeting held with all the top officials later that year, Blatter allegedly said that snoods were dangerous. Why? Because it could potentially strangle a player. But FIFA didn't stop here. Hell, they're even banning people now. Last season, Brentford star man Ivan Tony was found guilty of breaching betting rules. And after his appeal got turned down, he was banned from all forms of football for over eight months. But here's the plot twist. The main sponsors of the Brentford home and away kits are Hollywood Bets, and FIFA has no problem with them. But of course, they have the money to make FIFA change their minds. But at least Tony wasn't trying to steal money like Lionel Messi or scam an entire country like Ronaldinho. No, Seriously guys, I'm not clickbaiting you. Just watch this video I made a while back and you'll see for yourself. We have just watched. I don't have much to say, but subscribe. It's free.